so in this video, we're continuing our mechanics of materials series, and and here we're going to talk about normal stress in an axially loaded bar, which which really we're talking about the stress in the case where where um, we only have an internal normal force, uh, and that would be here if I had if I take a look at a a structural element and I were to cut it, you know, let's cut it and look at the inside of a structural element here. You know, I might see a shear. A normal force, a moment. You know, these are things that you're probably used to seeing or writing down, and maybe even an internal torque, right? And, and an axial loaded member, where, or one where there's only an axial load involved, um, essentially what happens is that the moment is zero, the torque is zero, and the shear is zero. And the only thing that's not zero is this normal force n. So essentially, what happens is either the the this structural element is either only being pulled or compressed, right? It's only being pu pulled in tension or compressed. Um, you know, examples of this that you've probably heard of, examples would be like a truss, okay? And, and the term would be like a single force member. Single force member right here because it only takes tension or compression. Um, other examples might be something like maybe even your legs, right? Your legs when you're standing still, yeah, they would be subject to compression. There would be no bending or anything if you're standing still. Uh, and it's just subject to axial load only. Uh, Maybe even a tree, right? I like to think of a tree, the weight of all the branches and bushes down to the main, like the trunkish area, right? Where it's all subject to compression due to its own weight at the top. Um, uh, I don't know, what else? Like, uh, let's see, I'm looking around, maybe my chair legs, right? If I'm not like, you know, moving around, but if I'm just sitting still, then they're under compression. Uh, maybe uh, something holding up a ceiling fan or a chandelier, like a chain or a rod that's hanging down. That would be subject to tension. That would be a single force member too, right? So there's all kinds of them that that occur. The um, but what we want to do is is really take be able to take this normal force and say what's the stress? Okay, it's the stress, and that stress is important because we want to know when is it going to break. Okay, so here if I let's take for instance, let's say I have this this rod here, bam, like this right here. And if I go far enough away from and I have this concentrated load P and P causing tension on this rod. And if I go far far enough away from the ends, like towards the middle of this right here, if I go towards the middle location of this uh, of this of this rod right here, and I can take a cut right here, you know, this middle location is probably the one place where everything's gonna every single point of the cross section that is my rod here, this cross sectional area cross-sectional area, I'll call that A, put it in green, and we'll say it's a uniform cross-section. Anyway, that's what we'll talk about a little bit in a second. But, but here, if every single point here, we'll just say it deforms the same amount, okay? Whereas over here, near my concentrated load, you know, I might anticipate that maybe I would deform kind of like a, like a lump here, wherever I'm pulling on it, okay? And so here, if I go far enough away, I want to consider the location where everything deforms about the same amount. Okay, so if I make a cut there, and I look at like this right here, and here's my cross-sectional area again at my cut. I have my external force P. Uh, if I look at all the equilibrium equations, I'll know that this N is equal to P. I'll know I have no moment, no shear, um, none of that going on. As None of that going on, and, and so I will have uh, I have this in, this normal force here equal to p. And because I have this normal force here equal to p, and because it's the uniformly, you know, I, I looked at it, and this is by observation, I noticed that every single point of this cross section was moving about the same amount. I could probably say that the stress associated with this right here, with this right this location right here, is this normal stress is also uniform, okay? All the way around right here. It's constant. This is a constant stress because I have the same uniform or constant deformation at every single point here. I could probably have the same, uh, bec that same constant stress over this area right here. And if I want to examine more closely, if I look at like a single element, of this right here 
if I look at a single element of this area, and I call that dA right here, and it has some increments of force right here, which I'll call about dF right here, a little increment of force, right? That means that, you know, that I, I should have that this, uh, the, the total, the total stress, if you will, that the, this, uh, uh, the sum of all the forces, these little increments of forces, is equal to the stress times the sum of all the area increments. And because this stress is constant, this d and, and if I sum up all these forces right here, if I sum up all the forces on every little area, so if I add up every little area with every little increment of force, this thing should come out equal to n, which is equal to p. And this right here should be this because this is constant i'll take this out it'll just be times the area and then this gives me my this popular equation here forget the p right here let's just say sigma this normal stress due to normal force is equal to n divided by a and this is you know this is that that relationship that's going to be really important that you're going to use a lot right and, and but this equation this equation here is based on a few assumptions that that you have to kind of you know you have to understand right it's a uh, uh, so here, like one of the assumptions is, let's put them in red. One of the assumptions is that this material is homogeneous, okay? Homogeneous, we have the same material throughout. We're not using two different materials. We're not using some like composite, like uh, a polymer and a fiber together here. It's like all one metal, right? Um, two, it's, uh, um, it's isotropic, okay? That means no matter what direction I have, if I have like a cube of a material right here, let's say right here, and I pull it this way right here and I break it, it's going to break at the same stress as if I were to pull it this way. And it's going to have the same stiffness, and the same deformation in, any dire in, the, in those directions right here. It's isotropic. It's got the same material properties in any direction. Um, and thirdly is that, you know, we're, this equation applies, this is an average an average normal stress, okay, average normal stress, and it, it, it equation uh, the equation assumes that I'm at a location where I have uniform distribution. The equation, uh, oops, let's see, at, at location with uniform deformation. I don't know if I just said distribution a second ago, but I mean deformation right here. Okay, so we have, so this equation probably wouldn't apply right here at right where that external load is applied. Okay, um, it's just because of, of the way the concentrated load here, there's going to be a uh, different stress intensity over the surface, but far enough away from the concentrated load. Uh, I have, if you will, every particle here, every particle that this material is built of um, works together to, to resist or to distribute this load P over the entire area. Whereas over here, maybe the particles closer to the external load um, uh, have more contribution, if you will, to to uh, distributing that force than the others. Okay, so that's another way to look at it. So what we'll do in the next video is probably look at um, at uh, at at some examples. All right. So hopefully that was a little clean. And if you let me know if you have any questions. See ya.